you know it. All right, so uh, today we it looks like we have a bunch of developers here. Um, so, so it's it's we try to talk about development. It's we want to actually do development. Um, so, I, how I think I could be most helpful to you guys is uh, is one, you know, kind of uh, establishing this baseline understanding of the Lightning Network. Um, two, talking about um, what kind of things that you can build on top of Lightning, you know, to spark some uh, creativity here. Uh, talk about some use cases that that might work with the Lightning, uh, and then uh, and then after that, uh, I'll, we'll we'll spend some time exploring. The, uh, the developer ecosystem and the tools that you have at your disposal to build on Lightning. Um, I think that building on Lightning is fairly easy and straightforward. The APIs are set up really neatly, um, and it's mostly just you know becoming aware of of what you have uh, available. Okay, so yeah, a quick intro of myself. Uh, my name is Max. Um, I work on developer advocacy uh, here for the Lightning Network. Um, I'm still a student at UC Berkeley. I'm uh, doing uh, computer science and economics. Um, uh, it is starting this summer. I will be uh, an adjunct professor at Berkeley Law teaching a blockchain course. Um, so some other things that I do, like uh, I've run blockchain at Berkeley uh, for the last uh, four years. Uh, I've been in this space uh, for also about four years. Um, and yeah, uh, like generally very interested uh, in Bitcoin and uh, non-hype applications of this technology. Okay, so this is going to be a rough outline of the talk today. Um, I don't think it's going to be uh, super long or you know <clears throat> or anything, but it'll be pretty straightforward. So let's let's first talk about some of the limitations of Bitcoin. You know, why do we want to build Lightning in the first place? Uh, what 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 constraints do we face when just using standard Bitcoin? So. You know, here's this Coinbase interface. You know, it's uh, it's very easy. You just like put in an address, like uh, put in the amount, and you can press the send button. But when you press that send button, there's a lot of things going on under the hood, right? So at first, the like the wallet software like forms this uh, transaction, you know, that like conforms to the Bitcoin protocol rules. Then it's broadcast to this Bitcoin network. Uh, where all these other nodes in this network have to verify, okay, are these signatures correct? You know, is this not spending? Is it has this output not been spent before? Then, then, then it's like, okay, cool. Uh, when, then we have to undergo this expensive consensus process to add it to the transaction history, where you know, now every uh, every node stores this on the computer, and eventually, you know, whoever I'm trying to pay uh, can is able to accept this transaction. So, you know, if just looking, looking, analyzing from it, from this perspective, you can break it down into okay, uh, you have like the broadcast, verify, you know, add it to the history, and then accept. So, in each of these, it's you know, there's a lot of stuff going on. You know, I, I'm assuming most of you guys understand how Bitcoin works, so I don't really need to explain this, but. Uh, like wh when you sign this transaction and it's broadcast, now you're incurring all of these network costs where this transaction has to be flooded through the network. And you have to like look through the transaction, like verify, okay, uh, do all of these, uh, these, uh, these, uh, does, does all the outputs, or, or, I mean, does the script, uh, is, is the script valid for all the outputs that it's trying to redeem? Um, like have all these outputs not been spent, then I need to look through my own, you know, blockchain, uh, look through my own local copy of the blockchain, like undergo this disk, disk seek time, et cetera, et cetera. There's a lot of stuff going on when you have to, uh, when you're trying to, uh, like broadcast this Bitcoin transaction. Uh, then after a while, you know, uh, maybe, you know, on average 10 minutes or so, some miner finds a block. Now, you know, this, other miners have to verify this block, and this one megabyte block gets propagated across the network, and they have to verify all of the transactions in this block. Um, and then now it's added to this uh, added to this history, where basically, uh, you know, once you have a on-chain transaction, you know, once you create a transaction in the Bitcoin network, it's it's on it's in it's on your hard drive forever, you know, and that is true for every single node that is running uh, this this uh, lightning. Uh, or that, that is, uh, not, light, not lightning, my bad. <laughs> that is true for every node that is running Bitcoin software. And lastly, you know, you have to accept this transaction in order for the recipient to, you know, safely say, okay, uh, like this transaction isn't going to be reverted uh, and I can, you know, render my good or whatever. Uh, they have to, you know, wait the average six confirmations to be secure against double spend attacks. And so, um, 
So what happened was, you know, if I'm trying to make a transaction to, you know, roast beef uh, just using on-chain Bitcoin, well, uh, one, I, I broadcast my transaction to the whole world, and no one cares except maybe the NSA. Uh, now, all these other Bitcoin nodes have to waste computation by, you know, verifying this transaction and verifying the block that, uh, that contained it. Now, it's added to the history, and everyone has to store it forever. Um, and before roast beef could do anything, you know, uh, maybe pay out on a bet that I won, uh, like, he has to, uh, or, I mean, what am I saying? Yeah, <laughs> he has to wait an hour before he can, he, can, uh, he can accept this payment. And, you know, furthermore, you know, Bitcoin is constrained by this, you know, one, one megabyte uh, block size. You can only fit, say, like seven transactions uh, per second uh, on it like by, allowed by the Bitcoin network. If we're trying to create this globally scalable system, you know, you have to essentially up your fees in order to get competitive into, into sharing seven transactions a second with the rest of the world. Now that's, that's, that's kind of problematic. So uh, can we do better? Uh, and yes, we can do better. And naturally this is, this is like the part in all those, uh, those ads where it turns from uh, black and white to like colored and everything's like wonderful. And now I'm gonna talk about how wonderful uh, Lightning is. So yeah, uh, the Lightning Network uh, basically uh, scales blockchains by um, um, taking things off chain. Um, it, the, the, the phrase that we like to describe it in a sentence, you can say, you know, Lightning enables these scalable blockchains through high volume instant transactions without custodial delegation. That means using Lightning is completely trustless. <clears throat> like whenever you accept a transaction, it's instant, and you can make a lot of transactions. You know, uh, like a lot of transactions uh, concurrently. Um, and Lightning operates by utilizing the security of the underlying Bitcoin network. You know, that's that's assumption of Lightning. If we need Bitcoin itself to be secure in order for Lightning to be secure, but you know, if we have this uh, this underlying layer, we can use it as like. Um, as a adjudication layer. If something goes wrong in Lightning, then we can always fall back onto underlying Bitcoin. And that's how we're able to, you know, in, in the optimistic case, get these really fast uh, flying transactions. But, you know, when something goes wrong, like we can just settle back with an on-chain uh, transaction. So, um, roughly how it works is, uh, you know, let's say uh, <clears throat> two people want to form a financial relationship. Uh, through Lightning, so this comes in the form of something called a payment channel. You know, you go to a coffee shop every morning, and you pay. You're always paying for that same three dollar coffee. You know, like it, this happens already in our in real life. You know, sometimes you say, "Hey, let me just open up a tab here for like, okay, let me just like put down two hundred dollars." And every time I come to this coffee shop, uh, I'll I'll deduct you know three uh, three three dollars from this from this agreed upon balance. Um, and that allows you to save on you know, your credit card fees and your transaction costs. And Lightning is essentially doing the same thing. By opening a channel with a counterpart, you're able to uh, amortize away the cost of your transaction fees uh, by batching it all together into you know, one, you know, one or two uh, on-chain transactions. So um, technically, how this works on the Bitcoin Lightning Network uh, is when you have two counterparties, uh, they, will, they will create a uh, and they will create a uh, opening transaction um, that, or, or a funding transaction that opens this Lightning Network channel, uh, and and it's it's a output that requires two signatures to spend from this output. And what we're doing when we're updating the balance in this channel, which is you know how much money both of us have, is we, we have to sign a transaction that is spending from this you know original transaction, um, and and that this uh, this this uh, closing transaction, so to speak, um, will have different amounts. Like, okay, maybe we started out uh, both putting, I don't know, uh, 0.5 Bitcoin into this channel. Now, if I want to pay you, uh, well, we want to create a, uh, new, uh, a new commitment transaction, like a new, a new closing transaction uh, that, where I have 0.4 Bitcoin that goes to me and 0.6 goes to you. Now, this whole time, you know, this, this transaction isn't, uh, isn't actually broadcast to the chain. The only transaction that is broadcast to the chain is the original you know, funding transaction, which, I, which, uh, which allows us to then you know, update the other transaction off-chain. So, um, yeah, so, so that's essentially how you know, the channel updates work. But now, how do you, how do you make this secure? How do you, how do you um, make it such that 
Um, if I, uh, let's see. <laughs> Uh, if, if I, you know, update the state a bunch of times and I'm paying you a bunch of times, what's to prevent me from broadcasting this old state where, you know, I had, uh, I had a bunch of money? So, you need some way to revoke these, uh, these transactions. Um, and to do so, um, we just set up a mechanism where, okay, uh, if you publish this, uh, if you publish this, uh, this uh, current state, uh, meaning you are attesting to the to the balance in this channel. Well, that means you know we want to hold you accountable because you're you're making a promise here. So we want to give the other person you know maybe a time of three days or so to 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 maybe come up with a proof that you're actually doing something wrong. You know, in the standard case, if you're a good person, uh, you will uh, not, nothing will happen. Uh, but uh, if you try to broadcast this old state, the other person has the means to punish you. So. Um, how this actually works is 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 uh, when you try to publish this transaction, it says, okay, um, I can receive this money uh, after three days, or um, the other person can take this money uh, if they know the pre-image to this hash, um, and that is uh, and. Whenever you revoke these transactions, you're basically giving the other person, you know, these uh, these these hash pre-images or. Uh, um, there's other ways to do this as well. You can like exchange like the private key that allows you control over this address. Um, like the, the main thing to know here is that okay, there is a revocation mechanism, and that that's what keeps these uh, these two-way relationships between people on the Lightning network uh, trustless. You know, you you're not really trusting your counterparty, so to speak. Um, you're only trusting them to the extent that oh, you know, I want to use you to uh, you know, I want to make payments with you. Uh, they they're never able to steal your money and take all the money in the channel. Yeah. Um, I, I think this might be a good place to stop for questions because that was a good amount of uh, technical material. Yeah. So, so um, the channel is that a data structure stored one chain or off chain? Yeah. So the channel itself is a transaction. So you have one uh, one Bitcoin transaction that has you know an output that that represents uh, that represents the total amount in that channel. And what you're actually doing is you're updating an off chain transaction that is sending from this on chain one. Um, yeah. So does it mean it takes a lot of it takes half hour to create a channel? Uh, yes, that is true. It, it does. It does take you. You want to wait the the six confirmations uh, to create a channel. Uh, yeah, that was kind of my question as well. So, so what happens if if, if um, I don't go to my normal Starbucks as, as, as in, in your example, but a new one which I don't have a channel with? Um, what will happen then? Because I, I've, I've read about like like there's a something. You can route through to other parts. How would it work in practice? Yeah, exactly. Uh, that's that's actually the next the next slide. So <laughs> perfect. Yeah. Uh, so what happens when the payment channel goes down? Uh, what happens when the payment goes the payment channel goes down? Yeah. Very good question. So um, so there, there's three uh, three ways that this payment channel might close. You know, let's in the in the standard case, you know, both of us are online and we're like, hey, you know, I'm I don't know, I'm moving to Canada or something. Uh, like, let, let's let's end this financial relationship. Um, and so, uh, so you both just cooperatively sign this uh, channel and uh, or, or what is it? You you cooperatively um, sign this closing transaction and let, that agrees on okay, this is the current state. Um, and because there are both signatures, you know, like you you. You've basically proven that okay, both people agree to this. Then you're able to receive your money immediately. Now the other case is, you know, what if your counterparty just I don't know goes to Antarctica or something, and and you you you've been trying to reach them for a month, and, and you can't you can't you can still can't talk to them. Well, you don't just want to lose all your money, right? So. And that is the case where uh, you can broadcast the current state, and you know because the other person isn't there to provide their signature, uh, you you can just you can just wait the the standard three days, you know, uh, three days, and then you get your money. Uh, now, in the in the non-cooperative case, or, or like the malicious case, uh, where you know uh, the other person tries to broadcast some old state in this uh, channel, um, you know, you don't. You don't want them to all steal your money, but you know because this is an old state. Uh, in order to, uh, uh, that means that this state has been revoked, and you have a way to punish that person. So you simply go onto the blockchain, you know, publish this, uh, you know, add this, uh, add this, uh, uh, add, add, like add this proof that that this state is revoked, and you're able to take all of their money. 
Um, so they are incentivized, uh, in fact, to act honest because otherwise the other person uh, gets all the money. Yeah. You have to do it within like three days. Uh, yes, you do have to do it within three days, uh, and so that means you know if you know when you have channels open, uh, you kind of want to be like active. So um, think of think of lightning. Uh, you know, uh, <laughs> Elizabeth says this all the time, but uh, you, you should think of lightning as like your checking account. Uh, you're using these for day-to-day -day, uh, transactions, day-to-day um, -day spending, uh, but you don't really want to put your life savings uh, on there. Oh. Can I just make a contribution? So that's a parameter that can be set between parties as well. So in a case where you know, the other party has a lot of money and they're trying to save it for yeah, so, so Elizabeth mentioned watch towers, which is basically like you can, you know, I don't want to be online all the time, you know, especially if, say, I'm running this lightning node on my phone. So uh, what I can do is I can actually outsource uh, this task of watching this blockchain, you know, because um, what you're doing is you're watching the blockchain for the other person broadcasting an old state. Um, and this is done in such a way uh, that you know you're 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 not really <coughs> trusting this person uh, like in terms of stealing funds like they're not able to take your money but they do have the the mechanism to uh, like automatically sweep the funds for you uh, in case uh, in case uh, in case that there is fraud detected yeah and, and like and there can be like fees paid to them etc yeah it's all. Justice. So, um, in the case where, let's say, we want devices to pay each other, like IoT, or, uh, so who will do the mining here? Where, where do you get the mining? Yeah. So, um, there isn't there isn't mining here. So, actually, well, maybe the better way to describe it is the mining is actually all contained in the underlying Bitcoin network. You know, we don't really talk about the mining aspect when we're talking about Lightning because we're talking about a protocol on top of Bitcoin. So who processes the mining transactions? I mean, who processes the Lightning transactions? Yeah, so the Lightning transactions, these these relationships are actually uh, bilateral. It's it's between you and another person. There's actually no, there's no like, you know, central uh, intermediary that like makes sure that all, all of these Lightning transactions are quick. It's just, you know, the software that you run and the software that your counterparty is running. So that's what allows the Lightning Network to be decentralized uh, while still uh, uh, giving you scalability. So if you see devices pay each other, so you think that the, each device will do the processing? I mean, you assume that they have enough compute power to do that? Okay, so um, all right, let me take, take a step back. Okay, so, so if, if you have like two devices um, that are trying to you know pay each other through this payment channel, um, what's happening is they're both connected to the Bitcoin network, and on top of you know being connected to this Bitcoin network, you know they're also connected to uh, the Lightning network, and they're running this like Lightning software. Now on the device. So where, where on all the device? On, on the device. So the yes. device has to have the capacity to hold the Lightning ledger yes. for its Lightning session. Yes, the Lightning software. Yeah. There's no ledger. Yeah, there's, yeah, there's exactly. no global ledger. Obviously. Yeah. Yeah. So, so this relationship is just two way. You know, there, there's no like third party, third party that they have to consult with in order to do these uh, transactions. All right, let's do two more, two more questions, and then we should like move on. Yeah, right there. Is there a limit to how long the payment channel can be open? Yeah. So there is no limit to how long the channel can you know, be open for. Um, yeah. Uh, so I've been watching the uh, the mainnet network grow. There's kind of graphs online. Um, it, it's been amazing to see. I think it's like went from 200 to like a thousand in the last like month, which has been amazing. But I've seen so there's been like hubs that have been growing. Like some of them have like just been larger and larger hubs with more and more connections. Do you sort of foresee that being a security risk at some point where like you know those those sort of become targets of kind of a hot wallet having a lot of money, or do you foresee sort of ending up becoming like a more spread out graph? With, there's just a lot of smaller nodes with smaller amounts. Yeah, I mean, I would like to say that, like, oh, it's just going to be completely decentralized. But the truth is, you know, no one really knows until we see, uh, you know, real production usage. Mm -hmm. um, uh, that said, there has been some interesting discussions recently, um, say on like uh, on like the de uh, Lightning Dev mailing list, uh, where they talk about these this special type of uh, of this of this uh, it's like of of a cycle. I, I forgot the, the buzzword for it, the, 
uh, but, but essentially you, you have, you're, you're able to form these uh, cycles of uh, nodes uh, that like all connect to each other and it allows for increased connectivity of the blockchain while, while being you know, more decentralized. So if you have like these hubs, you know, it's, if you want to, you know, uh, if you want to you know, take down a single hub, yeah, that's awful. But if instead of having a hub, you have this kind of like cyclic uh, graph structure, um, you know, you have to take down every single one of those nodes and it, like it's distributed again, yet you still have that you know, increased liquidity function of, uh, of, uh, of having kind of a more hub and spoke model. Um, that said, we don't want, you know, really a hub and spoke model because say, you know, the marginal cost of, you know, getting fees on this Lightning Network is basically the cost of running some software on your computer. Um, and so that means anyone is able to run Lightning, Lightning software. And, and you know, you can run Lightning software and, and, like, and earn money too. So hopefully, um, um, hopefully, like, that and some other developments we also have in mind will, will keep the Lightning Network very decentralized. Cool. Yeah. Um, so I just want some clarification on the cycle thing. Yeah. So what happens when the nodes figure out that they're in the cycle? Oh, it's a really good thing um, because that means uh, any one of the nodes in that cycle can pay any any one of the other nodes in that cycle. Um, and if you have like these overlapping cycles, then you you basically create uh, it's kind of like a like a click um, where you get you have very uh, a very short number of hops um, uh, to pay anyone else anyone else in this kind of like cycle thing. And furthermore, uh, all the people that want to pay through this kind of group. Uh, they, they also have increased liquidity to do so. And that's already um, it's, uh, it's it's not well. It's, it's it doesn't need to be implemented actually. The the harder part is actually you know coordinating to get this. Like I feel like we're kind of on a tangent, um, but but like no no no, no it, it's it's totally fine. But um, uh, the the only like you can form these cycles with these friend, with your friends if you want to. Um, if you hey, let's like create this like four like four cycle, and then we'll be a node and collect a lot of fees from other people because we have a lot of the, a lot of liquidity here. Um, if if you guys are interested, I can like uh, add a uh, link to the relevant discussion. Yeah. So we pay someone. We pay someone. You don't always have to open a channel to you and him. If there's already a link in the network, you don't have to open a channel. Uh, that is correct. Yeah. So. Um, you guys uh, already like uh, have been like touching upon this, um, which is you know so someone asked the question like okay, uh, what if I want to go to another coffee shop? Um, do does that mean that I now have to you know create a channel with this other coffee shop? Um, and you don't want that to be the case because the, the nature of most payments um, is you know for example it's, it's been raining these last few days. Uh, sometimes we lose our umbrella and we often just walk into a random corner store and like buy an, uh, buy, an, buy another umbrella. Well, that's just like a one-off relationship and and by opening a channel with that corner store because it was just one transaction, you don't gain any like cost reduction uh, from an amortizing with that corner store. So what I, I want to do is you know I want to leverage the existing financial relationships that I have with you know my current counterparties to perhaps pay this uh, pay this new person I've never transacted with um, by routing through some of uh, some of these notes. Um, and uh, this right here is basically how it works. So um, to, as a quick review, um, uh, we need to define a cryptographic hash function. Um, that is basically uh, you, you can take any amount of any input. It can be as large as you want. Uh, it can be whatever data you want. Uh, and then you run it through this hash function, and it's always going to output to some uh, fixed uh, sized bit stream. And, you know, and the key thing about hash, uh, these cryptographic hash functions is that uh, given some uh, output, it is really hard to find you know, the, the input that like, produces this output. But you know, if, if you have uh, some input, you can just run it through the hash function to verify that, okay, this indeed matches you know, the output that I'm checking against. So uh, Lightning Network uh, uses these hash functions uh, in order uh, to, to basically allow you to uh, send these Lightning payments across multiple nodes. So let's say you know uh, Alice has a uh, payment channel open with Bob. Uh, Bob has a payment channel open with Carl, Carol, and Carol has one with Dave. Now Alice wants to pay Dave without having to open a new channel with Dave or uh, create a new on-chain transaction. So 
you know, Dave is like, oh, okay, cool, money. Um, I'm going to be pro cooperative in this. So he is going to uh, generate a random number r, and he is going to run it through this hash function, and it's going to produce this hash output h. So uh, Dave will give this uh, hash output h to Alice, um, and he says, here, Alice, uh, take h. Uh, this will allow us to uh, allow you to pay me. So then, what Alice does um, is she writes a uh, a Bitcoin transaction, um, and it has these particular semantics. So it says, okay, um, uh, Bob, I will pay you, um, uh, but only if you know uh, R, which is the pre-image of H. Remember at, that, that at this point, Alice doesn't know R. Uh, Alice only knows H, so, she, so she's just creating this transaction, okay, uh, I'll pay you if you know R. Um, and he says, okay, uh, and Alice says, okay, if, uh, if, if you aren't able to produce uh, R um, uh, within three days, uh, then I will, I will be able to get my money back. So this, this allows Alice to make this uh, promise without you know, having any risk of losing funds. So then, you know, uh, Bob has this promise from Alice that, okay, hey, uh, I will, uh, that Alice will pay him um, if, if, if he can reveal R. So now Bob has no problem, you know, making the same promise to Carol. Like, okay, uh, Carol, I'll pay you, but only if you know R um, within two days. And then Carol does the same thing with Bob, no, or, I mean, with uh, Dave. Like, okay, uh, if, yeah, I will pay you uh, this amount within, uh, within one day, uh, if you know R. So uh, Dave, in fact, does know R. And since you know, Dave uh, has R and he's able to pull funds from Carol, he has no issue uh, giving this R value to both, uh, you know, to both all, all the other parties. So um, Dave does that. So uh, now, uh, now that Carol and Bob both have R, uh, Carol is able to pull funds, funds from Bob and Bob is able to pull funds from Alice. So, uh, so in, this, uh, in this scheme, you've basically settled in the forward direction. You know, everyone has a promise, um, has, has a mechanism to get paid, and no one is going to be you know, scammed or lose money here. Now, um, now you know, OK, uh, we don't want to you know, actually publish these transactions that we just formed, because they're, they're on-chain transactions. They're expensive. So instead, what we're going to do is we're just going to uh, settle these, you know, uh, between every one of these, uh, every one of these relationships. So, like, you know, Alice and Bob, uh, they say, "Hey, we don't want to use an on-chain transaction. Let's just uh, terminate. Let's terminate that off-chain transaction that we just made uh, and just make a standard, you know, uh, uh, channel payment." Um, and and that's what Bob and Carol also do, and also what Carol and Dave do. Um, and so um, this way, you know. Alice is able to pay Dave uh, without having to, like, without um, any, uh, without having to trust Bob or Carol, and uh, yeah, like it, it just like works really well. Um, so yeah, so through this mechanism, you're able to uh, pay whoever you want that is connected in this Lightning network. You can imagine uh, just uh, a, a whole uh, a graph where all the nodes are people running Lightning software and all the edges are just channels open between people. Now, any node that you can find a path to, uh, you're able to pay um, or receive payment from. Um, now that, that then becomes like a, that, that, that then allows you to you know, extend your single payment, uh, your single on-chain <coughs> uh, transaction uh, to allow you to have access to this financial network um, for as long as you want, which is a pretty cool uh, construction. Yeah. Yeah, how many hops can you have? Um, theoretically, limitless. Um, I don't. I'm not aware of any channel hop limits. Yeah. yeah. So how likely is it that, that there is a path to a random coffee shop on a corner? Uh, so will there be instances where I want to pay, but there's no no path to to that coffee shop? Yes. So. Um, there, there might be some instances, but you know, uh, what what we want is for a healthy lightning network is a very well connected graph. 
like, oh, you know, to get to any other node in this graph, it only requires, you know, maybe a few hops. Um, and if, if that is the case, you know, and if that coffee shop uh, who isn't connected to this Lightning Network uh, and they're still getting a, a lot of, you know, they, they, there's a lot of demand for their services, well, you are actually incentivized to open a channel with that coffee shop so that you can collect all the fees of people who are trying to pay that coffee shop through you. Um, yeah, so, so like all the incentives are aligned to, to, to help uh, to, to improve connectivity of the Lightning Network. To compute this, uh, you need the full picture of the graph. Who maintains that? Yeah. So, good question. So, uh, so who is going to maintain like the the full view of this uh, graph in the Lightning Network? Um, uh, basically, there's uh, these channel announcements. Uh, you announce, okay, I have this channel with this other person, um, and uh, like whenever you uh, whenever you start up your node, it's going to uh, query your neighbors, like, hey, can you tell me about like the channels you know about? Uh, and then the, that will they will query their neighbors, and um, you know there's this whole algorithm for basically building up this picture of the graph, um, and from that you can just do so, so the analysis. Lightning node, so the Lightning node has this database. Uh, yes, yes, the Lightning Node will have this database uh, locally. Yeah. Well, there's also other approaches that you can um, that you can uh, uh, that you can apply to this, um, like more advanced routing algorithms. But you know, for now, I think uh, we just have it implemented to know the whole graph. How does uh, how does Dave uh, like tell Alice what the hash is? Oh yeah. So so. Yeah, how does Dave tell Alice what the hash is? Just through you know a standard uh, network protocol. Like this is a uh, like telling telling Alice over the internet, for example. Um, but then you would have to have like a secure. Yeah. So so yeah. So the graphic here, the, these lines represent channels. Um, they don't actually represent you know um, like like a network links. You know, if if Alice wants to pay Dave, well, Alice needs to be able to communicate with Dave. In the first place, right? So, so that's why you have like this underlying like peer-to-peer -peer, uh, network. Yeah. Question. Oh, so, in order for Alice to borrow from Bob and Carol, they they all have. Let's say like Alice wants to borrow like five dollars, right? They all have to have five dollars. Yes, that is correct. Okay. And also, what if there are multiple paths to Dave? Do, does Alice try? Like, you know, more than one path. Yeah, so if there's multiple paths to Dave, um, you basically want to choose the path that is cheapest to you. Um, or you know, if you if you care about you know uptime, maybe maybe you care more about just like oh sh shortest number of links, um, and and so for every hop that you that you make, there will be some associated fee, um, and you basically add up those fees. Okay. Yeah. Um, let's say like Carol for some reason decides not to distribute R. Does Alice try another path? Carol, Carol doesn't distribute R. Well, see, the thing is, if Carol wants to, yeah, very good question. So if Carol wants to receive her money from Bob, well, she's going to have to publish this, uh, this on-chain transaction. Because all she has right now is this, you know, at that stage is this off-chain transaction. Now, when she publishes that on-chain transaction, she has to reveal R. You know, she has to prove that she knows R. Well, in that case, Bob can just look at the blockchain and like say, oh, there's R. And now he has a way to um, you know, pull, pull the funds from Alice. So, so in that scenario, what would happen is you know, uh, Carol like, basically makes this on-chain transaction to get her money from Bob. Well, uh, the relationship between Bob and Alice and between Carol and Dave is not affected. They can still settle it uh, efficiently uh, off-chain. What happens if Bob goes down after Carol sends the money to Dave? If Bob goes down after Carol sends the money to Dave, well, then then uh, then then Carol will pull uh, her funds from Bob if by publishing this on-chain transaction. And since Bob is you know not online, he won't be able to pull the funds from Alex, and he's going to lose this payment. Carol has to wait three days, right? Uh, Carol has to wait. Uh, Carol has to publish that transaction within two days. So um, the contract originally says, "Okay, I will pay the next counterparty, you know, Alice. I will pay Bob uh, if you know R within three days." Um, Bob makes the same party uh, promise to Carol, except with a two-day timeout. Yeah. 
that if, if, if you buy coffee, um, how how will this, 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 this two-day timeout work? If you mean, the coffee shop doesn't want to wait two days to get the pay, but is there, is there a scenario okay. where it yeah, so has to wait two yeah. days? Yeah, good, very, good, uh, very good question. So I, I like how these are like, uh, um, bringing up all the nuances, like, oh, how, how are these, like, how is it inst actually instant? Like, how does that manifest it in this, like, technical protocol? Well, uh, what happens is, like, you know, at, at this point, um, when, uh, when, uh, like, David, or Dave distributes R, um, you can consider this payment to be pretty much complete, you know, because everyone has a way to get their money uh, from the previous person. Um, and 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 because and because everyone does that, and it's like a path from Alice to Dave. Effectively, Alice paid Dave. Now, like because we want to settle this uh, efficiently, we add this additional step of like, okay, let's let's actually just do you know a standard you know a single like a like a standard payment within these two-way relationships um, instead of using these on-chain ones. So you can think of uh, these, all these promises look like, okay, I'll pay you if you know R as, uh, as safeguards. Like this is what allows the Lightning Network to be trustless and uh, what allows you to, to extend this clearance across multiple hops. Any more our questions here? Really good questions. So yeah. when does the, the, the on-chain transaction actually happen in this case? Yeah, so, so in this case, there are no on-chain transactions because uh, in this model, we're assuming that everyone already has, this, has these channels open. Um, where the on-chain transactions would come in if, is if, uh, if people want to, um, uh, if they want to open a new channel, like if establishing these channels in the first place or closing these channels. Yeah, question. So if there's multiple paths from Alice to Dave, is it possible for Alice to accidentally pay twice? Uh, is it possible for Alice to... To accidentally pay twice? Uh, no, because Alice will choose a path. Yeah, she, she'll choose like, okay, I'm going to choose this particular path, pay through Bob and Carol. Oh, okay, so yeah. she's basically just establishing the path all the day. Uh, so yes. Once you find Correct. it, then you actually send it. Correct. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, uh, very exciting news too. We um, recently um, uh, we we started talking about um, a, a, a atomic uh, multi-path payments, which which means that you can if if there are multiple paths to your destination, you can actually pay through all of them at once. Um, and using some cryptography, you can guarantee that like either all of the payments go through or none of them do. Um, and you know this is a lot better for uh, say like you know decentralization of the Lightning Network because you know it doesn't if you're trying to make like a large payment across the Lightning Network previously that would that would mean that there needs to be a large channel across you know every single node that you're writing through but if you, you know, if you have multiple paths you can spread that out through multiple like smaller channels and. Um, and all, it's also better for anonymity because like you can like mix up the transact the, the 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 amount that you're sending in that uh, in that transaction. It's yeah, a lot, a lot of cool stuff going on. No, yeah. I'm sure. In this example here, we are assuming Alice has enough money left in that channel to you pay Dave in the first place. But if that's not enough, actually, Alice will pay to draw from somewhere else to put in the channel to pay that. Yeah, okay. that's correct. Okay. Yeah. Probably easy, but why do you send devices to Bob and Carol to participate here? Uh, fees. So, like, when Bob, Bob and Carol say, like, oh, hey, you know, if you want to route through me um, and make me undergo the risk of potentially waiting three days to get my money back, um, then then just pay me some small fee, and this is you know included in in these uh, in in these like boxes. Yeah. Who determines how much? I mean, Bob and Carol can set their own fees. But I think these are actually users probably pick, like what people need to like go and set their fees, start to check out. Are we expecting any users to do stuff like that? Yeah, I mean we're expecting a lot of people to uh, to just run lightning software and um, and you know charge their fee rate. Um, I'm I'm not one hundred percent sure on like the, the the default rate that we have going for these off chain fees. Maybe Lalu or Brian can comment. Or uh, it's super it's like what's the thing right now, right? Well, uh, what's the default? That's the base. Uh, I think it's like one search right now in like 0. 0.0001 percent, uh, like that scale according to the amount. So it's super low right now. Uh, yeah. So you, so like it's like a base fee which charges like the amount, and then it scales according to some like, And right now it's like less than like it's like a 
a thousand of percent crystal so when there are a lot of junctions and you put a big mold. Possibly. I mean, it depends. Like, you know, if someone uh, is driving a very good service on some kind of like limited corridor, they maybe can jack up the ISO because then at that point, like, they're the only one that can do that transit. Um, so, like, so it depends on kind of like the dynamic conditions of that working model. Yeah. yeah, I mean, mostly they also have to pay for the cost to, to reduce whatever costs they have. So, if I'm running, if we think that it'll be, I think there will be a lot similar to people who run Bitcoin Pull does. It's kind of roughly that type of resource consumption. So somebody may want to say, hey, I want to recoup the cost of my bandwidth, recoup the cost of my electricity, um, so I'm going to charge a few cents uh, or a few cents per, per day for all the transactions that I process. And one of these does can process, process you know, thousands of transactions. So uh, they'll set their fees to offset their costs essentially, and maybe a little bit of profit on top of that. When they set up, when Alice wants to be paid, that you know in advance how many junctions are going to be in the way? Yes. Like the play? Yeah. Before the pay? Yes. Yeah, she chooses the route. And the route has she all of the all parts of the route. Yes. Yeah. So all of these fees are built for each junction one or another. Yes. So all the channel announcements have fees um, associated with each channel. So when channel, when Alan builds her route, she can choose the lowest fee path to pay. And she would consider a period of way, optimizing she chooses the actual lowest to Uh it's a satisfying type algorithm. I'll always talk a little bit more about that. It's nice for us, uh, it's a modified version of the actual source type algorithm. Uh, it's, it, will, it doesn't necessarily have the super ideal op total optimal path, but it will fit. It, it's a reasonable amount of path. So uh, how many of you would like to move on from this? <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, let's let's move on then. Uh, just just wanted to make sure everyone has like a good understanding. Yeah. Um, okay, so let's let's talk about some of the the advantages of Lightning. You know, I, I think we've I covered a lot of these in the questions, um, but like now it's it's possible to send uh, one Satoshi uh, instantly in this you know open and decentralized network. You know, without having to trust anyone, um, and that's I think that's super cool. And you get. Uh, you get really cool. Uh, you get really good uh, cost reduction um, in terms of uh, amortizing your uh, tr on-chain transaction fees. So you just make one uh, on-chain transaction to create a payment channel, and after that, you have access to this whole uh, financial network uh, for as long as you, uh, you know, for, for as long as you need. Um, and yeah, like th there's 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 a lot of things. Like you can you can make a, a, an infinite like an unbounded number of payments. Uh, because you know each of these payments that you're making, it's not actually being saved anywhere. You just you just need to. It's just between you and your counterparty. So you can like send thousands of transactions a second, and that scales the network to you know say even millions of transactions per second. Um, furthermore, like you know your fees a priori. You don't have to uh, like you don't have to use this like fee estimator and like guess like how long it's going to take your on-chain transactions to be included in a block. Um, yeah, there's a lot of stuff going here. It also works well uh, for developers uh, because instead of having the original uh, payment flow where, um, like, okay, uh, I'm I'm sending you money now. This this uh, like I'm I'm sending uh, person A money now. Person A has to have this this like task that will check the the blockchain. Okay, uh, does this transaction have six confirmations? Does it have six confirmations? Only then is it able, actually able to accept that payment. Uh, versus in in, uh, in Lightning, you it's just like a single API call. Okay, cool, uh, it worked. Um, um, but the, the trade-off here is that it's it's not quite suitable for uh, very large payments. You know, if you're trying to send like a million dollars through the Lightning network, uh, it's, it's, it might be unlikely uh, for you to find enough uh, liquidity in the channels that you have open. Um, in that case, you should probably just use an on-chain transaction. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I think we can like skip this. Okay, so um, you know, if you remember those original, uh, th those original like that setup of like what happens uh, when we press that send button on Coinbase, uh, you know, incurring all that cost, you know, the network has to verify, etc. Now, you know, using this, uh, using Lightning instead, 
Um, the difference here is that, okay, this transaction that we make, it's only known and, and like computed by these two, by these participating parties, um, and perhaps you know, the nodes that you uh, router to. You know, there, you're not telling everyone else in the world about every transaction you make, which is like grossly inefficient and also uh, pretty bad for privacy too. Um, you're not adding to this uh, history uh, that all the nodes have to store. It's only just between you and your counterparties. Um, and the, the, your, your counterparty can, uh, can instantly accept this payment. It costs you Satoshi amounts in fees, you know, like default fee is like one Satoshi, uh, and, and there's no limit to how many transactions that you can make per second. Whereas the Bitcoin network as a whole, everyone on the Bitcoin network has to share seven transactions per second. So. Like you as an individual now with Lightning can make thousands of transactions per second. Okay, um, so uh, you know now you can finally buy uh, Roger Ver a coffee uh, <laughs> with uh, with uh, with Bitcoin Lightning. Yeah. Okay. Um, so uh, as for the Lightning network itself, here's some you know rough information. Um, the 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 specification for the Lightning protocol is uh, is still in progress. Um, it, if you if you want to find you know all the nitty-gritty details of how Lightning works, uh, you can just you can read through the specification. Um, and there's about four implementations that are being developed um, here at Lightning Labs. Uh, we're building LND, which is the Go implementation. Uh, there's also Eclair, uh, uh, which is uh, uh, which is Scala. There's uh, C Lightning, and there's Lit. Um, and uh, as of uh, earlier, um, yeah, as of as of pretty recently too, um, we made all these implementation implementations interoperable. So you know, you as an LND node can now pay you know the Eclair nodes, etc. Um, uh, some other exciting developments uh, recently is uh, we we did the first ever uh, off-chain cross-chain atomic swap. That's a mouthful uh, between uh, Bitcoin and uh, Litecoin uh, testnets, um, and and that has huge implications for you know now you know. It, it, it's 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 kind of like combining the network effects of different cryptocurrencies together. If Bitcoin has a Lightning network and Litecoin has a Lightning network, now holding only Bitcoin, I can you know pay people on the Lightning network, and it's just like this instant exchange. You know, there's uh, there's you're, obviously there's still some uh, problems to be uh, solved in terms of like oh how do we uh, how do we make the order book decentralized and um, and and how do we like you know basically how do we create this market this exchange rate, but um, that's something that I'm personally very excited about in the coming years. Um, and uh, uh, the, the developer community as well around, uh, around uh, uh, the Lightning Network is also growing. Uh, we have a list of what we call LAPs, you know, not decentralized apps, not DAPs, like Lightning apps, LAPs. Uh, there's 33 uh, LAPs on this page that, that you can check out, you can interact with, they're hosted somewhere, and like, click around. Um, and that, that's, it comes from a whole variety of, of ideas that people have implemented from you know, developer tools to, uh, to games, uh, to video streaming, um, to like, visualizations of, Lightning, of the Lightning Network itself. I think there were one question, yeah. Yeah, um, two, two questions actually. So, so I looked at the GitHub repos of, of, of Int Eclair and Lightning D, and they all seem to be focused on test um, Lightning D um, C, you would think it would be mobile, but it's, it's, it only runs on Linux uh, right now. It's a daemon. Eclair needs a full bit no, a Bitcoin node on, on the same machine. Um, it seems that this it, it, it makes a lot of sense for, for, for mobile. So my question is, is, is there any uh, development going on that, that specifically targets mobile? And the yeah. second question I have, um, the cross-chain swaps. Um, these swaps are uh, taxable. Um, is there any way, uh, is, is that taken into account? Um, because at the end of the year, you're supposed to uh, pay tax over that transaction. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so I mean, the uh, atomic swaps are like, in the future, it's probably at least a year out, um, I would say. Um, I'm just talking about it because I'm, I'm very excited about uh, atomic swaps. Yeah, so um, I would imagine that like, when we implement it, we would also eventually also want to build like, okay, like tax accounting for these, uh, the swaps, yeah. So the mobile? Uh is there any mobile development? Oh, yes, mobile? yeah, and uh, for the, there, uh, there is a desktop and a uh, mobile app. Um, Can I yeah. go on that one? Uh, so right now, uh, we have 
most of the little desktop app. Um, there's that with the UI, the balance. Um, and then on the mobile front, we're actually working on one. Um, there is an Eclair, which is one of the three major drop and lightning implementations. Um, they have a mobile app on testnet. And there are no apps on mainnet yet, so they're all still on testnet. Um, I believe they just released a new version and it can currently uh, only send out right to people's media um, online. And they're like, so you want to mention Neutrino Max? Uh, yeah, Neutrino is also a new uh, light client that uh, we've, we've developed um, for that to be used with um, to to be used with uh, Lightning and Bitcoin. Um, don't really have much to say. It's like a privacy. Neutrino, I would recommend it for a mobile app because you don't want to be running Bitcoin on your phone yeah. and validating the entire blockchain. Uh, so, like Jack Mullers, who's the, uh, the developer running. Zach uh, got LED running on his own and was like tweeting about it in November with his school and built a very new chip UI, but that's still a lot in the works. Yep. So it will be likes. Uh, Node implementation you said? Uh, yes. Yeah. Neutrino is a like, light client uh, implementation. Yeah, the premium. Yeah. Okay. Basically, it's not FPV, but it's, a, it's the conceptually the idea that you don't yeah. have to validate. It's a, it's a better light client than the existing uh, Google based light client. Yeah. Yeah. It's better uh, better for the privacy and scalability. Yeah, yeah. There's more details uh, on the, the GitHub repo for it. Uh, also, and then, there are two bits as well related to you know, bit 157 and 158, if you want to check that out. All right. Cool, yeah, and then uh, like intro to our uh, own uh, daemon, the LND is a, is a name for it, uh, Lightning Network daemon, pretty straightforward. You can find the code at that link. Um, it uses uh, BTC Suite, which is a uh, set of libraries to interact with Bitcoin and Go. Um, and it, uh, the lead developer is uh, sitting right there, uh, roast beef. <coughs> so uh, very, like, we're super excited. Uh, very recently, uh, we released uh, our 0.4 beta, which is our mainnet release. Um, we were the first to uh, launch officially, you know, the Lightning Network on mainnet, and find and like now we have we have financial Bitcoin transactions, you know, with real money, and that's that's like super cool. Um, I think Elizabeth has something to say. Uh, quick point. Um, also, it's Bitcoin D support. It's Bitcoin what? Bitcoin D support. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, that's that's here. Okay, yeah. sorry. sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> so yeah, so our beta release is uh, is developer oriented. Um, our our desktop app still that is isn't still up to speed with beta, but that'll be coming soon. Uh, it's in the works. Um, some of the new capability that, that comes with uh, this beta is, is, as Elizabeth mentioned, uh, Bitcoin D support. So instead of uh, where uh, you're, you're not forced to use BTCD anymore, which is the Go, um, the Go uh, uh, library to interact with Bitcoin, you can use Bitcoin D, which is uh, Bitcoin Core. Um, you have, now there's a lot of other features like uh, easier uh, backup and recovery from data loss if, if something goes uh, uh, corrupt or something goes, goes wrong. Um, there's there's much better uh, fault tolerance, meaning that like okay, if your uh, electricity, your hardware, your network goes out at any time, or your computer shuts down, um, you're not going to lose any money um, by making sure that everything is properly persisted to disk. Um, there's better, uh, there's smarter pathfinding where you know if you're if you're trying to make payments and like okay this this route uh, fails okay for the next time that I that I make a payment I'm going to try a different route. Um, pretty straightforward. Um, there's there's now uh, like some multiple subsystems for uh, doing this kind of uh, this this contract resolution in the case of a malicious uh, event to make this a, a bit more streamlined. <clears throat> uh, we removed support for uh, for non segwit addresses, so you can so when you're using uh, Lightning by default, uh, you are being a good citizen and saving on chain space uh, and and you know being. Uh, helping the health of the Bitcoin network overall, um, and and <clears throat> we added some metrics where um, if uh, as a routing node, uh, meaning a lot of people are paying uh, paying each other through you, uh, you have now access to uh, stats, um, uh, stats and analytics of of like oh how much money am I making, you know how many transactions etc. Uh, over time, um, Lightning Labs itself recently raised a 2.5 million dollar round, um, pretty exciting and. Uh, 
and we're doing an ICO. Just kidding. Uh, <laughs> uh, someone, 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 someone mentioned the idea of of, of OSINT tokens, <laughs> so I so I had to include that in there. Um, yeah, how are we on time? A little bit. I'm short on time. But I'll just spend uh, just a few slides uh, talking about um, use cases and then uh, point you guys to the developer site and then we'll wrap it up and, and, and then we can like talk about questions. Any questions? Okay. So, um, so we basically understand what Lightning is at this point. You, know, you have a high volume of you know, instant, uh, very low fee pay payments while retaining the decentralized and trustless nature of the, um, of the underlying Bitcoin network. So, um, what are some of these use cases? So uh, I've, I've categorized them into a, a few rough groupings. A lot of people talk about, for example, uh, the standard media use cases. Like, okay, um, we can have micropayment paywalls where uh, under this, say, like freemium model where uh, I will uh, read maybe the first few paragraphs of, of this article. If I find that I want to keep on reading, then I will just like click this, uh, click this button and it will reveal the rest of the article and, uh, you know, um, and, and there you go, like I paid like a tenth of a cent to view this uh, article. And presumably um, this is uh, better, this is a better uh, revenue model for these, for people producing content. Um, you can also pay uh, for every video that you watch. If you want to get really granular, you can pay for every five seconds of a video that you watch. Um, <clears throat> you can also do payroll by the minute. Like every minute that you're working, uh, you're getting paid. Um, and this is actually, you know, uh, th this might actually be, um, uh, useful because uh, what happens in our uh, in, a, in our current model is is through the course of a month, you know, a company is accumulating money uh, to be able to pay off the, the payroll, and you as you you as an employee of this company, um, you're you're like draining your checking account over time, and so you have this reser re uh, reverse uh, like reverse like saw of of like oh you know like cap capital inefficiencies. So presumably if you can settle instantly with lightning payments, um, that, that will be a lot more efficient for the economy overall. Um, and if for some reason you want to, you know, take all the, the economic inequalities of our existing uh, system to, the, to our game worlds and virtual, uh, virtual uh, worlds as well, then you can implement games that have uh, Bitcoin as, as, the, as, the, payment, uh, as the currency. Um, uh, there's also some, you know, good uh, some some of the standard use cases like okay, we can use uh, Lightning for uh, machine to machine payments. Uh, it's like very well suited for all sorts of micro payments. Um, you IBM Adept talked about, for example, like oh, you have this you have this scheme where your uh, your um, your, your TV uh, is is at peak hours for the for the owner and the and the laundry machine is is competing for electricity, uh, but but. So, so in order to decide who who gets to stay on, uh, the the TV like pays the laundry machine to go delay its cycle for a few hours, like some some like crazy stuff like that. You can pay for uh, metered energy for you know maybe even like uh, charging drones or charging your Tesla. Um, and then so there's also some technical use cases. Um, one one that I'm particularly uh, excited about is uh, a DDoS resistant internet. Um, uh, currently, our internet uh, it's free to uh, send payments um, to route payments through it. Um, or, oh, oh wait, what am I saying? It is, it is it is free to send packets through the <laughs> through the internet. A little bit tired, sorry. Um, but you know, if, if you're able to embed a Lightning payment in every single internet packet that you send, that and say like, okay, you know, in order to uh, do a uh, a TCP handshake with this server, um, you you actually need to like just send a small amount of Lightning payments. That makes it prohibitively expensive to launch uh, DDoS attacks. You know, there's there's still some um, still some uh, like assumptions there in terms of like, oh, like we have to make sure that like accepting the payment itself is is also not something that is expensive. But there, there's an idea. Um, you can also Implement, say, like anonymous uh, API tokens, um, where uh, you know now instead of having to have an account at I don't know the Twitter API or something, um, I can just you know for every API call I'll just include embed a Lightning payment in it and just pay per usage, um, and that's hopefully hopefully a better model too. You can also pay for uh, internet by the mega megabytes. Um, <clears throat> there's also some purely financial uh, use cases, so. Uh, uh, I think that high frequency trading between uh, cryptocurrency exchanges is going to come about uh, once you have a Lightning network. 
um, especially once you have you know Lightning integrations. Um, you can do uh, decentralized exchanges, which which has this whole other world of like good things, um, and uh, potentially you can reduce the risk of uh, theft at these uh, centralized exchanges. So instead of you know giving your money to the exchange uh, to hold in their wallet, um, what you actually do is you you open a Lightning channel uh, with this exchange, um, and um, and you know. In, in this channel, both of you have your, you know, your, uh, your side, your side of the balance. Now, if the exchange gets hacked, the only money that can be stolen is their side of the channel. Um, you're not by default holding your money at, at the exchange. Um, and you know, whenever you you <coughs> you want to make an exchange or whatever, you can like you just like pay to the exchange through your channel, um, and that's the only money that you have at risk. So uh, potentially, Lightning can uh, help mitigate um, the the risk of. Uh, of, of, of theft uh, and you know every week we see like a like a hundred million dollar like hack going up yeah uh, and then uh, lastly um, as uh, uh, as kind of a uh, uh, lastly I want to talk about some of the just standard blockchain use cases so uh, recently uh, I mean well not recently but like a lot of people talk about like, okay, why do you actually need a token for these like ICOs? It's really hard to find any really good reason. I, I'm also of that opinion, and I also think that you know Lightning is a good way to prove to people that you don't need a token. Um, so like all of these uh, all of these services and products that these that these ICOs um, are saying that they're gonna want to build. Hey, you can actually build that on Lightning. So in, instead of their token. So you know, for example, you can build uh, storage on Lightning. You can do computation, like your oracles, whatever arbitration, like whatever things these uh, like ICO land can come up with. You can build on Lightning. And you know, uh, conveniently, you know, because because the blockchain space is open source software, you can take you know, the, the portion of their software that uh, handles, I don't know, like the storage and the computation part, and you can just like port that over to Lightning and use Lightning as like the payment layer, and therefore you just like, like saved a lot of engineering cost without um, going to jail for you know, raising a bunch of money. Um, yeah, so there's a lot of other stuff too. Um, like you can do, uh, you know, you can do like uh, trustless, uh, efficient, you can do like uh, fair off-chain betting, but you know when when is gambling really fun if it's fair? Um, and uh, you can also uh, experiment, you know, with your uh, with some game theoretic protocols so using your knowledge of economics. Um, one idea, for example, is if you have Reddit that actually has paid upvotes, um, where where it's uh, where every every time that you upvote, uh, you make a payment, and it's distributed to all the people that upvoted before you. So, so then how the incentives align there is uh, if, if you're someone on the internet who is, is able to um, identify good content be before it blows up, in, in other words, you're a tipster, uh, you're able to uh, you know, basically uh, identify, like post this good content, upvote it, and as other people like, upvote after you and like, pile on, you, you get paid back and you, you get like, um, paid. And that, like, this is something, all something that you can implement on Lightning. So, yeah. Um, so the conclusions is that you know uh, that uh, using uh, these cryptocurrencies um, and using Lightning gives you uh, these qualitative uh, advantages over uh, traditional uh, like uh, U.S. dollars. You don't have to use like personal information, um, and uh, and yeah, Lightning Network enables all of this. Okay, I will keep this last section very short because I think I think we're we're uh, we're short on time, but uh, I just wanted to. Uh, Point you guys to uh, the the developer site. So, um, if you go to dev.lightning.community, you can find all of the resources that we have uh, geared towards developers. Um, so, uh, for example, if you want to refresh um, refresh your uh, knowledge of Lightning, you can go to the the overview and developer guide, which is kind of like a, a written version of this of this multi uh, of the multi hop payment uh, that I uh, that I presented to you guys. It also has some um, some additional um, information on like okay like what happens like the, the channel lifecycle like the actual APIs that you're using. Um, there's like a pretty straightforward. There's like an installation tutorial. Um, we have we uh, we also have a full on tutorial where um, it teaches you how to uh, set up a, a local uh, Lightning like cluster. You know you set up Alice, Bob, and Charlie, and then uh, make payments between them. 
Uh, and then uh, in, in the later stages of this tutorial, you learn how to connect to this uh, using uh, gRPC, uh, which is, basically gives you these nice APIs in a, a set of languages like Python, JavaScript, um, and then and then you attach a uh, you, you attach a actually a micropayment paywall on top of it. So we we called it Lightning CoinDesk, uh, and and you can like test with this like UI that we built. Like oh, actually making payments, um, and this is all on your machine. Um, the one other thing I wanted to show you, or maybe two others, is uh, is we have a resources page, um, all linked to from from the 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 homepage where you can find. Like okay, all sorts of uh, uh, like ways to learn about the Lightning Network order, uh, ordered by um, uh, ordered by difficulty, and we also have an API site where you can like look through uh, basically okay like how how do I interact with uh, with this particular method with uh, Python gRPC, um, and then lastly uh, if you if you're you know run, going through all of this uh, you know. Uh, maybe you run into a problem, you want to get some help. We, we've set up a Slack here. So here's a link to uh, an invite link to our uh, LD developer Slack where you can um, you know, meet other people, uh, like minded, uh, passionate about Lightning, and uh, get help for whatever you need. So, yeah, I also find that Slack is, is kind of like the, the stack overflow of. Of, of our of our lightning, you can if you whenever you have a bug, you can you can just like copy paste it into the Slack, and usually someone has already asked that question. So, yeah, uh, I guess I'll just any last questions before we. Uh, yeah. uh, I have a question. First, why is this go go like lightning labs work? Why are you going to why are you going to make it so the patients going to work? Is it going to be like user facing problems? Um, where are you guys going to stop? Because you know, a lot of you are the And the related question is, what is actually the business model for you guys? And I guess also for other companies that they would like to pay because it is, you know, like as far as clients and it is related to them. They say, okay, you guys are really open source stuff and we can get money for free. Thank you very much. But I'm sure that's not the business plan. Yeah, I'm going to answer that question. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I missed it. First, I started the company to make money. And why are you getting away from it? Yeah, how did the company make money? And you didn't get it. Why did this local stuff you put Yeah. So, uh, our uh, software is called LNT, like you know, Damon, uh, is one of multiple interoperable implementations for the Lightning Network. Ours was the first to reach a beta milestone. Hopefully, others are coming soon. We have this whole collaborative process um, of the Lightning specification. Um, major participants have been assaying the creators of Declare, uh, developers from blockchain, the creators of C-Lightning. Um, uh, Jim Hosen has been involved in some point base, so that there's been a, and then a variety of just different developers coming from around the world. Um, for our company, yeah, as mentioned, we are not ICO, we're kind of like the comfort point now, you know. Uh, actually, brings the normal seat down, it's the bigger. Uh, shouldn't have worked in product. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, so our, uh, and, you know, we're not saying exactly what yet, but our model is still in the structure related to Lightning. The protocol will always be open source. And anybody can be there. There's a specification uh, online where you can actually go and, like, you can build your own Lightning implementation on the basis of the specification. So um, our implementation of the protocol are always going to be open. For Lightning to work, there will need to be quite a bit of infrastructure around it. So we have a lot of really interesting ideas around that. And then as Max mentioned, the uh, costume swap technology. So uh, Lalo, especially, has been very strong and some really cool encounter back there, uh, has its ideas around that. So basically, we build infrastructure uh, and products and services that make Lightning work, but the protocol is still there. So, so, it's, so it's up to you to build all the apps uh, on top of it. Uh, and supposedly the model is going to be similar to say, more money, like the company, which like, yeah, one thing you know, it's sort of like you actually want to do that, you want to stop thinking around, you want to stop like that, that's where they make money. That's something I think it's a little bit different because we are in this kind of financial infrastructure realm, so there are certain ways that we can monitor, like, they can't really do, say, swap stuff in the way that we can, but. Sure, like the protocol is open um, and it will be safe. A couple more questions. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, um, I have a question regarding the Alice, Alice uh, base day. Oh, yeah. Um, it's a simple question. What, what happens if uh, the day of sense 
H, uh, sorry, uh, H, right, the hash, yeah. Uh, but let's say Alice and Dave are colluding with each other. Uh, and, but then nothing happens. So the, the Dave can keep sending more and more H, but he, won't, he will never send R. I mean, the, the, the option is not to get paid, but just to have the network. Well, so so in that so in that case is like we're we're trying to scam Bob and Carol, right? Um, the the extent of what happens to them is like okay, they they made like Bob makes this promise to Carol, like okay, I'll pay you, uh, you know, if, if you know R within two days. Um, but uh, because they they don't, Dave never sends R. Well, Bob is just able to uh, publish the transaction and get his money back after two days. And next question is, is there any advantage to running um, Lightning Node also as a mining node or a full bit? Uh, is there any advantage? I mean, oh, there might uh, be dying. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think it's just independent. Like, if you want to also mine, um, I, I can't, yeah, I can't really think of any advantages except maybe the fact that miners tend to have a lot of money at hand, and perhaps that would be a good cause to to be try, try to be a hub of this network, um, and because you can provide a lot of liquidity. But okay. uh, last question: um, Is there? I mean, it looks like you can put Lightning on many uh, any other network also besides Bitcoin. Is what minimum requirements do you see on the other? Yeah, so you need some sort of a hash time lock. Um, so the mechanism of like, okay, you know, if I publish this this latest state, um, the other person, like, you have to have a mechanism to say like, okay, uh, this other person had is able to show this like pre-image, um, uh, uh, yeah, to, to show this pre-image of this hash that will then allow them to like, you know, take the funds. Um, and using that and uh, having like certain. Uh, basically, having a time lock of transactions, like okay, um, this transaction, or like, as in like, okay, I can only, for example, I can only get my money back after uh, three days. Um, like having that branching functionality um, is the minimum that you need. Um, so theoretically, you can build a Lightning Network on you know Ethereum and whatever other uh, other platforms. Um, but that, and, and there is sorry, what? The data has Litecoin support as well. Yeah, yeah, we already support Litecoin because it's sort of just changing a few lines of code. <laughs> well, maybe not a few lines, but yeah. Or, or listen, do we have more time? Yes, we have time for three more questions. Okay. So you in the back, you had a question. Okay, you guys. You already asked a lot of questions. <laughs> Go for it. In the long run, you guys envision having one big global network or multiple independent networks, which may or may not be compatible. I mean, it's most useful if it's one global network, right? And and people are incentivized to connect the different networks together. Um, I, I think if you mean uh, across different blockchains, then I also think people are incentivized to connect the different blockchains together. Um, so I think I see Lightning as not just a you know scalability mechanism for Bitcoin, but also as an interoperability protocol between you know a, a whole bunch of different blockchains. But uh, we don't talk about that too much because there's a lot of engineering work that needs to be done first, um, and we need to focus on that. Yep. Oh, so you mentioned a lot of uh, use cases where you would basically uh, embed a Lightning transaction inside a packet and stuff like that. And I was wondering, like, why could you do it the other way around? Like, can you add like another like additional payload on top of the Lightning transaction since it's it's like basically like Bitcoin transaction, but you guys have your own network, so you can build on top of it. Yeah, so you can. Um, I think I, I mean currently you can, um, and we actually do utilize that for other stuff. For example, the multi-path payments. Um, but I think there's like a limited amount of space. Um, that's not to say that we can't, you know, uh, in, increase the amount of space that uh, increase the amount of additional like payload that we can add with our payments. What do you mean by space? Um, as in like, oh, we only have like 50 bytes or something like that of space to do something, uh, something cool. Why, why does it need to be small? Like it, it's uh, for efficiency of the network. I, I think this is more a question that like Lalu or Connor can answer. Um, it's it, basically basically he's asking about like the uh, with with every uh, Lightning payment, there's some additional payload that we can add. And I was saying like, oh, we can we're already kind of using that for some things like you know like multi path payments. Uh, yeah. uh, so, uh, 
So yeah. why can't you like embed like a video packet inside a Lightning transaction instead of a... Because that's being very big. It can also be because like uh, in a few things where we ensure the packet only contains fixed size of the entire route. So otherwise, if it shrinks, then you can kind of like discern where you are in the route. So uh, you know, that feels like, you know, you don't just send like, okay, like a video over the network, but that can then never happen. You can basically use like the packet, the uh, video, to like signal something about the video, and give them a deeper features in the past, and then do all that you know, onto this. There was, yeah, so you had a question, you had a question, and you had a question. <laughs> <laughs> and then we do have to get out of here, so to the bottom. Uh, are you guys adding uh, multi sync support to the line? Um, that, that's a complicated question because I think that kind of implies like multi-party channels, um, which is something that we've talked about and would be cool, but like it's you know it's it's on the queue, like where and we don't know where on the queue it is. Yeah. So um, just out of curiosity, in this example of Bob Carroll Bay, does Bob and Carol get the full routing information as well, or is that obscure? The, the full what information? Do they have the full routing information, routing information? So, so for instance, like, you know, some for another organization want to monitor all this. Yeah, so, 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 our lightning payments are actually onion routed. Um, so, each hop is only aware of, like, you know, the node that sent the payment to them and the next hop. Um, and so, so the, the sender of this payment determines determines the path of of these transactions, and, and that makes Lightning better for uh, uh, privacy. You can read more about the the uh, the, uh, the the onion encrypt uh, the onion encrypting uh, of transactions in the specification. Last question. So you mentioned that because of the privacy requirements uh, and people being mostly mobile nowadays, you guys are. Assuming that there will be watchtower services, right? That can, that can watch the network for a person who might be with a client, and uh, so we're just trying to cheat basically go to the big chain. Now, I think it's fair to say that there are significant parties in the Bitcoin ecosystem who will be served by showing that the network is unreliable. They have incentives to do that. So, my map is like there are things watchtower services, they're big, but you don't the brands, you can trust them. And then someone decides to lead off these watchtower services or these one of the major farms just to kind of cause a in the system and establish the idea that it's not Wait, so, so I think I missed like the, the last, or like... Paul, do you want to answer that one? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, if you don't, you don't want to Okay. And then, so, you know, maybe a few days. Not necessarily. I mean, like, so it depends, like, the time watch is very cool. And, like, you know, like, if you're working on the same side, you don't have to be longer. But also, like, um, you know, um, these, these services may not also be public to the internet. Right? So I can maybe only take a few clients on the network, not just like, myself. Like, but it's often to be like on voting, right? It needs to be like a multi-day thing, and that's why we spend a lot of money on that point. I just made that to me. So maybe at that point, like, you have to get those people to do that. But there's not going to be like one sort of entire platform, right? So you know, if I need to think if you're running a new club, you know, maybe that'll take a day. I have like, this is going to be quite a while, so just serve some clients, and then I can use that, right? So you basically need to have a cost. I mean, yeah, a lot of things. The watchtower system is very,
want to, you know, in my room, I can my phone on that. Right, so now I can use my parents in my house and feel like I can do it. All right. It's just a numbers game, really, right? And you don't know which computer you're watching, right? So. <laughs> do you want to make any comments on just like the DOS question generally? Uh, I mean, the thing is, like, the DOS would seem persistent for days and things. So you have to watch Or, yeah, I mean, you know, generally. So like some of these be very, very consistent to the uh, high quality of the itself. But also which is why I like, you know, my room would be one of them in one time maybe shoot it and have a fall, you know, have a fall fall to kill over as well. So um, yeah, this is also going to be a joke, it's not going to be a confession. And then it's kind of like, well, okay, it's in five days. So like, you're not there, you're going to be racing the money on your body. So it would be cool. Yeah. And if he does, like, one more many you know, the network, you know, people are trying to ask. Yeah. So that will be like a prescribed. We have to wrap up because they will kick us out. <laughs> I we still have like 20 tables to arrange in here, but we are continuing the conversation at the LARC around the corner. So can we get a big round of applause on that? And the whole